Well, welcome back. Today I'm hoping to get this bumper primed. So I'm in kind of the final stages of prep. Uh, I've sanded it down. I've got it pretty smooth. Last time I was working on some filler stuff. I did some filling of these cracks here and some of these little pinholes. And that actually, sanded that down and that actually works really, really well. It is just kind of time consuming. And um, I think most of these little nicks and cuts and small cracks and small holes and stuff, I think the high build will fix it. If not, then I'll put some filler on it. I finish cleaning this up, wipe it down, tack it, get it all ready to go. And then we'll see how it goes. I've got some plastic laid out, at least on the car and in the hood. I didn't want to get any overspray on it. The rest of this garage is kind of whatever. There's it like three different colors of paint on the floor. I'm not that worried about it. It's like 92 degrees today, so I don't have a whole lot of ventilation in here, but I've got an exhaust fan and a little bit of vent, so Hopefully we won't, you know, fumigate ourselves today. This is the paint that I'm using, or the primer anyway that I'm using. I don't have the paint yet. Local store, uh, have to order, they can make it there, but their system was down and I didn't get, they, they couldn't make it that day. And an online order is gonna take like two or three weeks to get it. So I'm gonna try that store again later this week, but this is just regular gray. What I would call, this is, they call it filler primer. You might call it a high, a high build primer. It sands pretty easily, feels deep scratches, fast drying. I'm hoping this is gonna work for us. So I'll put a link down below to this stuff. I've used this stuff one time before. I haven't done a whole lot of body work in my illustrious automotive career, uh, but uh, I have used this before and it seemed to work really well. It was really easy to use. It was on a much smaller piece than this though, with and it was flat, like a, it was a tailgate of a Jeep Cherokee. And this is a little more intricate. So, we'll see. We got this propped up here. Uh, I don't have like one of those fancy bumper rigs. You can hang them on for painting. So, just kind of rig something up on sawhorses and a chunk of wood. And it's just resting on where these vents holes are. So we can float pretty freely here without doing any damage to it. But be up high enough where I can get it off the floor, I can get around the edges. Uh, I've got the turn signal lights out, the whole lenses. I figured that was easier. They would come out pretty easy and that was easier than trying to tape them. All right, so I lied. That is not sanding good enough. So. Let's send that real quick before we get too far gone here. I had uh, carpal tunnel surgery last week and I thought I'd be laid up a lot longer than I am or than I was. It was, it was actually pretty quick, much quicker than I kind of worried it would be, but it's not quite all the way there yet. So still can do the stuff, but it's just a little slower. There's some chipped paint in there. That's gonna be no good for priming. It's just gonna peel back off. By the way, for probably the 565th time, uh, this is a really, this is gonna be a really, really hacky paint job. Okay, so just know that I'm not trying to press anybody here and I'm not trying to win any awards. I'm just trying to get it done. You know what I mean? This car has been here for two years. It was a six month project. It's two years into. So, you know, I'm just trying to get her done. So, and I'm kind of running out of budget to get it done. So we're gonna do this on the cheap and uh, it'll get done and it'll look all right. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll be good enough. And uh, you know, I don't have a paint booth. I don't have uh, fancy tools. I certainly don't have any know-how. I'm just making this up as I go in a way. I'm not really making it up. I have done this before, but not much, I don't have a lot of experience with it. And I don't have 
uh, not even just experience, I have a lot of expertise. Right? I don't, I'm not really that good at this. I'm good enough, but you know, if you're gonna looking to get your 70 big block Chevelle restored, I'm not your guy. Don't call me, okay? But we're gonna get this one done. Gonna use relatively inexpensive primer out of a rattle can. I'm gonna, I will spray with, when I get, you know, base coat and stuff, I'll spray with a gun here, but, uh, but it'll be a cheap gun. It's gonna have little nicks and scratches and all kinds of stuff in it. It will not be a perfect paint job. So if that's what you're looking to get out of this, if you're looking for me to teach you how to do that, you have come to the wrong channel, my friend. If you're looking for somebody that can show you though, just how to get it done, I'm your guy. Because that's what we're gonna do. Sometimes I'll say like, yeah, if you see something I'm doing wrong, let me know. And I, I usually mean that. Not always, but usually. But in this case, I know a lot of the things I'm doing wrong. And I hope to be for you is a little bit of an encouragement because I know for a lot of people, this would be something that they would say, you know what, I'm never gonna get it to look right. And I, you know, you don't need a professional paint job, but you're too afraid to even do a bad paint job. And then you pay a lot of money. And it's, this stuff isn't cheap, guys. This kind of work is very expensive. As it should be, <laughs> it's hard work. I'm not, I'm not knocking the price of it. I just don't have the money. Maybe you don't either. Maybe you got one little panel to do. Maybe you backed into a post at the grocery store and you just want to get it fixed. My hope here is that through this, you get enough confidence that you're like, shoot, I can do that. If good enough ain't good enough for you, that's cool. I'm not judging you at all. I'm just saying, if good enough ain't good enough, Call a professional. Now maybe over time, you can get pretty good at this. I'm hoping over time I get pretty good at this. Today ain't that day. Today, I'm very mediocre at this. It is a mid 90s mullet mobile. So, it'll be fine. I ain't that worried about it. Okay. We're clean. Now, I will tack it. Now that said, just because I'm not very good at this or because I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm also not trying to you know, totally screw this up either. So I am hopeful this goes well. Especially on this part, the bumper, because, you know, everybody sees the bumper. It's hard to hide imperfections on the bumper. You can hide it somewhere else. But this one's going to show to everybody. So we'll do the best we can here. Like I said, I still want to make it good enough. I don't want it to be garbage. And like I said before, everybody's got their own standard for what is good enough, right? When I say I'll be good enough, it'll be good enough for me. And do whatever makes it good enough for you because it's your car. And the only opinion that matters about how good your car looks is yours. So don't worry about what everybody else says. Should have done this and should have done that. And you do you. All right. Get some gloves on. I got that tack stuff on my fingers. <laughs> these gloves are hard. My fingers are kind of tacky and it's hard to get these gloves on. Shake this, ooh. That, uh, that feels suboptimal. Some uh, surface prep. Grease and wax remover. So you, I, was, I was working with my bare hands before. And uh, when you do, you leave a bunch of fingerprints and oils from your hand behind. And that stuff is not very conducive to paint. So ideally, the best version of this process is a little sprayer. Those little handheld pump sprayers. Uh, I don't have one. So as you wipe this on, this just gets off all of the residues and greases and other stuff that will make that primer not stick very good. And you just let this kind of evaporate off, which it will do pretty quickly. So it was not clean. So when I say cleanish, it was 
cleanish. The other day I was using that um, Rust-Oleum stuff, which is fine, but that sprays like regular rattle can spray paint. This has a different kind of nozzle on it, so it sprays in a bigger fan. So I'm gonna test it over here on the plastic just to see how it's spraying. Yeah, all right, so it's got a nice upward fan to it. I usually get a little bit of a little rag here just to wipe the nozzle once in a while so you don't get any spits and drips. And where's my respirator? I never seem to remember where the respirator is. There it is. On the floor, full of dirt. So that's perfect. Let's not get paint all over my hat. Oops. Let's put it on right side up. Get this off so maybe you can hear me a little better. I'm gonna come around and hit the edges first, inside here, get inside here, kind of do the tough spots early so I'm not over spraying too much on everything else when I'm trying to do that. Then get the big, the whole surface at once, best I can. Start with a relatively light coat to begin with. Don't get too crazy with it. Yeah, let's get started. So give it a few minutes, flash, and we'll keep coating about it. This says that you can top coat in 15 minutes or be sanded. So if you can top coat in 15, I'm gonna give it maybe three or four or five minutes and then give it another layer. So I tend to be pretty liberal with the primer and uh, not quite as concerned about kind of too much spray in one spot or, you know, like I would with base or especially with clear because this is sandable primer. So I'm going to sand this anyway. So if it's a little bit wavy, a little bit of imperfections, I'm okay with it. What I'm not okay with, I don't know if you guys can see this down here. This is what happens when you don't get all the paint off. There's little cracks right here where this is flexed and the paint that's on there had cracked and I didn't see it. Even after sanding it, I didn't see it. But now that I'm getting primer in there, I can see the cracks. So my hope is I can build that up and still get it good and smooth. If not, I'll have to sand that part back down and do this again. I said this multiple times with the hood. Once you get some paint on and it's all one color, man, you really see all the little cracks and every imperfection shows up. So, like I said, we're gonna do the best we can. All right, let's do the third coat. So this third coat, I put on pretty thick. Try to get as much fill as I can. That's it.
I'm gonna stop here. Whew. There's a lot of paint in here. <laughs> Save some of my primer just in case I have to do some sanding and I have to sand too far. I can already see a couple of chip spots on this side. I'll show you here once it dries, but, and this airs out a little bit, but yeah, I'm not happy with it. Um, so I may have to do some cleanup on this side and then reprime. So I'm gonna save some primer because that's my last can. So we'll stop here, let this dry for 15, 30 minutes and we'll come back. We're dry now and a lot of it looks really good. It definitely cleaned it up, smoothed everything out, uh, especially the top. This was the part that was all pitted from all that old bug gut stuff that had corroded into the finish. And it's nice and smooth now, but there are some problems. This spot over here, was chipping and I missed it. And when I went to fiddle with it, it chipped and fell off. And there's some other, can I see that spot there? And there's a sanded spot here. It didn't get clean enough. Another crack in the paint here. And there's a bunch of spots like this right here where this is the old paint and then this was chipped away and I just tried to sand this smooth but didn't get it smooth enough. There's a chunk of something that ended up in the primer. So now I got that to fix. And same thing up here. Now this is the bottom. You're not really gonna see this very much but I haven't decided whether I wanna try to fix that. There's a crack in the paint there. So that can be fixed with some of that filler and then we'll just touch up the primer on that if we want to. The biggest problem is actually on this side over here, where this would be the passenger side. There's a big gouge right here. And then a bunch of these, these are really hard to see. Maybe I get a light and you can see it a little better, but there's a bunch of little hair cracks down this. That if I, if I flex this bumper a little bit, you'll see a little better. See those, there's one there, there. So I'm probably gonna have to sand that and clean those up and then again, put a little filler on and reprime. So that's why I saved some primer. So this is the process and, uh, but generally like, like about 80% of this, maybe 90% maybe of it is pretty good. Well, um, I tell you, sometimes nothing will humble you more than thinking you've got your car figured out. It turns out the cracks are not in the paint. They're in the plastic, the poly. Something to do with age and, and when the clear coat this, that protects this whole thing starts to fade off and now that's unprotected, that stuff goes through the paint and actually gets into the plastic and damages the plastic. And so it's actually got little tiny hairline cracks in the surface of the plastic. So I sanded this down quite a bit with 80 grit. I've gone through a couple of rounds of 180 and then 320 and it's nice and smooth now, but it took a while. I ground off a, a bit of gray here before I got to something that was smooth. And actually down here, there's some little tiny cracks right here but I think I've got all the other ones out. Problem is now, uh, this is the next day. I primed this yesterday and uh, came back out here today and these cracks that I saw here yesterday that I was unhappy with are all across the bumper now. I mean the whole like, 
over probably half the bumper is got those little spider web cracks in it. And it sounds like the only solution is to sand the entire thing down to the plastic, to the polyurethane, and actually into the polyurethane and get all the cracks out, and then repair anything that is extra deep. So apparently this is a thing with these, with these polyurethane bumpers in the 80s and 90s. They just crack over time, and there is no fix other than sand them out. So uh, I'm gonna, I guess, get to work with the sander I looked up like, you know what, this is going to take me forever. What's, what is a new primed bumper cost? Um, about 500 bucks. This is the $479 is the cheapest I could find. I found one on eBay for $859 plus shipping. Uh, shipping was like a hundred bucks. So yeah, I don't have 500 bucks to spend on a bumper. This car's not done yet. I got more to do. So I can't spend that much on just the bumper. So I've got hours and hours of sanding, whatever, guess I'll get to work. Before I get too far into the sanding here, I kind of want to give you a little bit better picture if you haven't seen this before. I hadn't seen this before. So let's see if I can get you right here. So you see that was where that, there was something in the paint. So ignore the little hole there but it makes a good reference point. You see all the cracks coming from there? Now that little hole has nothing to do. That's just a hole in the primer. It was a piece of paint that was stuck onto the bumper and I didn't see it until I primed it. So I just kind of painted into it. So I just picked it off with my fingernail. But see those spider web cracks there? Going all different directions. And then you come around to the top here. So there's some that crack goes all the way up there. With the naked eye, by the way, I don't know how they're going to look on camera. We'll see. With the naked eye, they're pretty visible. Uh, and that's with a light gray. So you can see what it takes kind of a light and, and get real close up with the camera to see the cracks on camera. But trust me, it looks a lot worse in person. So I said I didn't want to do, this wasn't trying to do a real high-end paint job here. It's one of those things where when you do something for the first time, you learn a lot while you do it. So I'm learning a lot while I do this. And it's just sweat. So, you know, sweat and time. Uh, so far, I've, I'm, I'm $24 into primer, so I've wasted $21 of it because I got a little left. We'll keep going. Uh, this is going to take a while and I won't bore you with all of this. So I'll keep sanding away and I'll bring you back when I get done and show you what it looks like. So for those of you who are familiar with these things, you already know what I'm saying. But for you, if you're not and you're thinking, are you sure, Ryan? Are you sure the cracks are in the plastic and not just in the paint? Yep. Come on, focus for me. There. This is sanded onto the plastic. You can see the cracks. Little hairline cracks. And I thought, some of those I saw, and I thought this primer, this high build primer would fill it. And the problem is, it's such a flexible bumper. These are cracks, not just gouges. And so as the bumper flexes, it cracks the paint back open. So gotta get those out. They're not that deep. So I'm just sanding into the plastic a bit and it's starting to get them out. It's just a lot of work. I don't know how to get in here. My sander isn't going to get in there and I don't have enough workable hands to sand that by hand so I have no idea we'll see well that was uh it was a lot of work and disappointing this was all primed just a few days ago so after a few days of sanding on again off again um my hands only let me sand about an hour or so and, and they give up on me so kind of taking it slow but Got most of the primer back off, at least the spots that were all spider webbed, and then got down into where into the into the plastic itself. You can see down here at the bottom where kind of sanding down far enough to get those cracks out. There were some up here as well, and then um, it was particularly bad on this side here, where I just basically did the whole side. Now. One thing I found, some of the really, really, you know, noticeable cracks, even when I got down to the, to the gray original plastic, I could still see them and so I could see when I was sanding them out. But 
there's some that once I sanded through the primer, they disappeared. And I know that that's not true. So they just were so fine that when you start sanding on this plastic, it gets kind of soft and fuzzy. I don't know what the term is for that, but that's what I got. It gets fuzzy. So like furry feeling. <laughs> so it, uh, so the cracks kind of disappear in the texture of the rough texture of the, of the bumper. And so I don't know for sure if I got them all. And I think the only way I'm going to know is to throw some primer back on and just see. So I've got a little bit of primer left. I don't have enough to do the whole bumper. I'll have to get some more, but I'm going to spray some of the spots that were noticeably bad before and just see if I can get a idea of whether or not I've made any progress on this. that be for a minute so one of those spots was right here another one was right here these look like they've covered up okay we'll see what they turn out but that one's definitely still got a crack in it I still might be able to fix that with another coat we'll let this flash a little bit more and we'll give it another spray the other thing that was true about this before though now that I think about it is there were some spots that were really bad that I noticed right away. And then there are some spots uh, I didn't notice. I knew I was like, got this up, obviously going to have to sand this down, so I need to get some, some more sandpaper. And when I came back the next day, like way more was cracked. Like it took, like as the paint really cured, as the primer really cured overnight, it, it cracked more. So it's possible that I do this and I think it's good. And then I'll come back in here tomorrow morning and it will not be good. So I think that's also what I'm going to do is just give it an overnight and see what happens. So I guess we'll pause here for now and we'll come back tomorrow and see what it looks like. So far, so good. This is the next day. It's actually the next afternoon and everything seems to still be smooth. No cracks. There's a little bit of a of a scratch right there, but um, I think it was just a deeper scratch and this would fill, I think, another coat and then we can smooth this out. I'm gonna go ahead and cross my fingers and prime the whole thing and hope for the best. So this is a Duplicolor paint, the Automotive Primer Series. Um, what's the can I have you for? Anyway, this is a different brand, it's a different color. Obviously, you probably noticed that already. It's a darker gray, but it sprays so much nicer. Uh, a little finer, but a lot smoother. So it's just a different nozzle they put on this particular brand, but um, it doesn't seem to have the coverage the other one had. It's, it's pretty light. So it's obviously going to take multiple coats, which I expected, but man, it sprays so much smoother, lays on so much smoother. So maybe it's not quite as high build. This is a high build formula though. I don't know. I like this a lot better though. I'll put a link to both of them, but. However, it doesn't like spraying like this. It needs to be vertical. As soon as I start to spray at an angle, it starts to thin out and so getting in here is kind of hard because you got to tip the can a little bit doesn't seem to like that looks pretty good I uh, checked it last night it was pretty good left it sit overnight so this is what day three I don't remember how many days we get into this uh, no cracks so that resolved the spider webbing so this side here was really bad and there's nothing here. Now there's a couple of runs. There's a run spot right here. It might be hard to see on camera. There's another one where I got a little bit heavy trying to get in this curve here. Got a little heavy right here. We've got a couple of little pits, little, little pinholes, probably little air pockets. So we'll try to sand those out. 
and then some rough spots this one's a little rough and down here there's some sort of rough feeling that could be areas that i had to sand real deep into the plastic poly stuff which scuffed it up a lot and despite trying to smooth it out as best i could it's it just becomes real porous and sucks in the primer so i don't know if it'll need another coat um i'm gonna try to sand it smooth with some like 600 grit and just be real light with it i don't want to get through the primer and i did pick up some more sandpaper this stuff on rolls is a peel and stick so it doesn't really work real super awesome with a sanding block that doesn't take a peel and stick like this foam block here i tried to stick on it and you can see it kind of started to tear the foam apart so that didn't work very well so I'm just going to use it by hand and this stuff works a little better or at least a little cheaper. Oh yeah, that's smoothing out. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to sand probably this whole thing with the 600 grit. I don't know if I could DA this or not. That would certainly make my hands feel better. But I'm really nervous about over sanding. So I'm just trying to do this by hand and be real light with it. I also have said like five times, but I wish I had some guide coat. And yet, and sometime in the last three days... I probably could have gotten some, but I haven't. hair dog hair it's when you have two big dogs and dog hair just finds its way into everything they're never even out here so obviously i carried the dog hair with me which again like some kind of you know lint free paint suit would be a good idea i will definitely get one before i put face on i don't want to contaminate the paint with whatever dog hair yeah this is turning out super nice so this bottom side here is not great but it's the bottom it's a driver so it won't take very long before it's not great anyway because it's gonna get driven whether by me or by somebody else so speaking of i am considering selling this well not the bumper the car um it's been a long project it's been fun mostly it's been a little frustrating at times but one of the things i've learned in this process this is my first real like big car project like this where i'm doing the whole thing like that right versus just doing repairs on either my car or somebody else's. Um, I really, I kind of like it. So I think when I get this done, I think I'm going to put it up for sale and use the money from it to buy the next one. So I don't know. What do you think I can get for it when it's all done? And what should I get with that money? What would be a good project to kick off next? Comment down below. Let me know what you think. It's a cool car, but there's a lot of cool cars out there. And I can't have them all. I don't have a garage space. So, you know, maybe we'll rip around this one for a little bit. And then we'll see where it takes us. Let me know. What should we do next? I think I'm done for now. It's primed. It's sanded. It's smooth. I think it's ready for paint. It's not perfect. From 10 feet, it's going to look pretty nice i think but uh, obviously get up close there's still some 
scratches in the in the paint there's some paint that's chipped off some nicks and whatever you know it's a driver and the rest of the car looks just like that so i'm not that worried about it uh if i was doing a show car or doing something a classic that i wanted to look really nice and i would i would take a little more care probably would seal this uh, i probably would have stripped it down to bare plastic or polyurethane whatever um and uh so you know it is what it is but i'm happy with how it turned out so next is, next on this will be paint next in our project will be get the fender off it's because it's also that weird you know burgundy color and get that prepped and hopefully it doesn't have the same kind of cracking issues this had i don't think it will it doesn't need any particular fixes or repairs or body work so that should be just scuff it up get the clear coat that's peeling scuffed down uh, back to a paintable surface and then we'll just end up top coating that with the new color i got to get to the paint store and kind of poke them a little bit uh, i've been waiting a week to hear back from them and haven't heard anything so i'm going to go back over there and and uh, needle them a little and see where we're at with paint because i know you're not supposed to leave this sit for too long before you paint it before you put base coat on it and i don't want that to be a problem later uh, and then I'm going to try to polish up the rest of the car. I had thought about re-clearing the whole thing so the clear matches, but the more I look at this existing paint, the more I think it might come around with a decent polish. So I'm going to try that first because I have a polisher and I have some polish. So it's just time and effort. Let's give it a shot and see if that shines up. If it does, I might leave it and just try to blend the clear in. Uh, I've not done that before. I, I don't know how much... How good I'm going to be at it, we'll find out. But you know, sometimes it's good to just dive in and learn a little something. I'm trying to show you in this is that it doesn't have to be that perfect. It can. It's a driver level car. Don't overthink this. Just get after it and and make it the best you can. And at the very least, it's yours. If you don't learn anything else, you learn in this a little bit of de determination and elbow grease can get through it. Like I said, the beginning. This humbled me a little bit and uh, thought I had it done, and then it wasn't done, and had to go back after it. Just keep getting after it. You'll get there. Good luck with your project. I hope that helps you. I appreciate you very much. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.